I knew she was the one. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry. Out of all the shitty dating shows that have come out of Netflix in the last few years, this one seems to be the worst which also makes it the best. Netflix has just been spitting out bad dating show after bad dating show. They know what they're doing, and it's obviously working quite well for them. Once again, I was told by my friend Jesse that I should make this video after he watched the show and saw how bad it was firsthand. And after he told me, I just, I started seeing red and my eye was twitching with anger because he was telling me what to do again. But then I remembered that he told me I should do the Chris Angel video and that, that worked out fine. Now the premise of the show is simple. It's not. It's, 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 it's not simple. <laughs> Whenever I do these videos, I make notes about jokes and points that I don't want to forget, but for this video, I had to make a study guide with names, ages, relationship statuses, what happens to them at the end, because I could not follow for half of this. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. The premise of the show. There are six couples, and one person from each couple is issued an ultimatum marry or move on, which on its own is already a silly concept. But after the first day, the couples will all split up, meet someone else from the group, spend three weeks with them in a trial marriage, Jesus Christ, this is so much, and then after that, they will spend another three weeks with their original partner in a second trial marriage. By now, you guys are probably seeing how much this is just a really good fucking idea. It's perfect reality TV. Everyone will come out of this happier than they were when they came in. Probably. Now, like I mentioned before, the concept of an ultimatum in general is silly, and usually when this happens in real life, it's because someone in a relationship feels like they've been dragged along forever and there's no future with their partner. Well, don't worry, that is not the case for anyone on this show. Because not one couple on this show has dated longer than two and a half years, nor is anyone over the age of 30. Half the people on this show are my age, so you can probably imagine me watching people my age stress out about marriage and kids kinda, I don't know, Stress me the fuck out. Now, while there is no shortage of nincompoops on this show, the people who issued the ultimatums are by far the worst. Now, while them issuing ultimatums this early in their life and their relationships is already silly, the fact that they're doing it on Netflix... You gotta be a certain type of person. <laughs> but at this point, I think it's pretty obvious that the main reason people do these shows in the first place is because your Instagram will just blow up afterwards. Because it always happens. Now, aside from the couples are the hosts. Nick and Vanessa Lachey. Obviously. I'm Nick Lachey. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know what they did to Netflix in the past, but Netflix now owns their souls. They have hosted every dating show on this platform and will for the next 300 years unless they break whatever hex has been put on them. Some of my favorite quotes from the show, and there are plenty, come from them. If the person that you were with, who is now your ex, is living with someone and they come out of that, they're like, we found love. Thank God you did that now and not after you were married with two kids. As if the show isn't creating problems that would not have happened otherwise. Honey, I know we've been married for 10 years, have a wonderful home and two beautiful children, but I can't go on like this anymore. It's over. Oh my God, why? What happened? Well, on my way home from work today, I met 11 hot singles. I had to pick one of them, spend three weeks in a trial marriage with her. I learned that I was much more compatible with her than you, so I've decided that I was going to throw away everything we built in the last 10 years for her. <sighs> Aside from you spending three weeks with someone in one day, that all makes sense. I just wish we would have done this all on Netflix 10 years ago, in front of millions of people. We would have been so much better off. I knew she was the one. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry. I always have reasons why I would hate to be on shows like this, even though it would be so much fun. But in this show specifically, it's the endless mirror confessional room. I so obviously have a good side. It's the side of my face that I have not been spending the last 24 years of my life sleeping on. So to imagine a room that shows every angle of myself, it's fucking hell. Psychologists agree an ultimatum is not a good way to get somebody else to do what you want. You don't say. But it is the best way to get you the answers you need on a timetable you can live with. And it's very entertaining for everyone not involved. Is that how it worked for you? Teach me. <laughs> this hand is saying yes. <laughs> so since you won't do it, I'm just saying. <laughs> Anything else, April? We wanna rapid fire off any more jokes or can we move on? Let's real quick take a look at all the couples going into this. Brought to you by my study guide. First, we have Jake and April, age 26 and 23. April is the one that issued the ultimatum. She's 23. Like, this isn't post-World War II America. You can give it a few years. The chances of Jake finding someone as interesting as this personality? Good luck. I mean, that is what people with the most interesting personalities often say. A lot of the guys on this show, and in real life, often cite financial reasons for the reason that they don't want to get married just yet. But we find out that with Jake and April, it's a little bit more than that. I don't want you to keep anything in with me. Well, I can't talk to you about it because you get mad at me and then it starts another argument. 
Every fucking time. Just a little more. I love you. Love you. Me kiss. Mm. Give me a kiss. Babe, I'm about to... Fuck. I'm hoping with this experience, I can date around, get better clarity on what you want from another perspective so I can give you everything you need. I just think like the only way for me to be the best partner for you is to like fuck someone else. Does that make sense? Or do I want to lose you? No. Do, do I love you? Yes. Do I love you? Yes. Do I want to lose you? Of course not. Do I also want to fuck like three people? Yeah, that sounds pretty fucking sick. Look, the point is, we then have Lauren and Nate, age 26 and 30. They don't really have a problem with getting married. It's more so what comes after that. Lauren doesn't want kids, which would kind of put marriage to a halt for most people. But I hope that by the end of this, they work through that very, very serious issue and come to a solution before doing anything silly. Or not at all. Who knows? Next is Ray and Zay, age 24 and 25. I have graduated and I have everything planned out in my life. Isn't that kind of how it goes, you know? College, then proposal, then babies. I think you forgot to squeeze in embarrassing yourself on a Netflix dating show. I think it's that and then proposal. Aside from Zay just not being ready for marriage in general, it also seems like he doesn't know much about Ray. Like, she doesn't seem to open up that much to him, which, I don't know, maybe seems like an important thing to kind of nail down before marriage. Sue me. I'm stressed out that you're gonna end up liking somebody else. And I'm asking you to talk to me about how you feel and you can't say anything, but you're stressed out about me liking somebody else. Now, Alexis and Hunter are the most annoying couple by far because Alexis. My thought is, if you're serious about a relationship, then put a ring on my finger. She is the token annoying blonde that every one of these shows has on Netflix. Like, she was designed in a lab for this. There's a part of me that really struggles with the concept of an ultimatum, and so to take such a hard stance and not give sort of any opportunity for discussion is, is frustrating. No, Hunter, you stupid fuck. This is the only way. There is no other way. This is best. Now with Madeline and Colby, Madeline obviously does not want to get married. She is just here for a good time. I don't really believe in there only being one person for everybody. I don't even think she wants to be in a long-term relationship. She just wants to hang out and explore Randall. I do have attraction to Randall. Yeah, I'm willing to explore Randall a little bit. And Colby is my favorite character on the show. And I say character because he is not a real person. I thought he was just going to be shy and quiet overall, but I think once he learns everybody wants him, he just switches up. <laughs> but I'm looking for the characteristics I want in a husband. I need a manly man. And he's six foot or taller. That's my requirement. Stupid fucking requirement. Nobody... Nobody wants a, was a fucking giant, like, stupid big ogre. Do you have a wild side? <laughs> of course I have a wild yeah. side. I like sci-fi books. Yeah. Of course I have a wild side. You ever read The Expanse? Now, Madeline wastes no time. She goes right for the guy that she had her eye on from the start, Randall. Which, oh yeah, uh, Randall and Shanique. They're dating, one of them wants to get married, the other doesn't. I forgot about them, they're kind of boring compared to the rest of the roster. I think Chloe is definitely scared to admit that he's excited for this. Yep, we can tell. I get annoyed. You don't have to say something every five seconds. Shut up and let me think yeah. for a moment. He's just always putting on a show. While Alexis and Colby are getting to know each other, we get a deeper look into what Alexis wants out of marriage and why it's so important to her. I have a certain lifestyle that I want to live. Marriage for me is a financial decision. Cool. If Hunter wasn't making enough money that was reasonable, I would walk away. I think it's the first time I've said that out loud. Well, what a great place to do so. I don't think I'm the man that can fulfill all of her needs she's looking for. Mm -mm. I know I told her I work in sales, but I sell printers at Office Max, man. So you're the one that issued the ultimate. I'm the one that issued okay, the ultimate, okay. um, yes. Now Jake and Ray hit it off. Maybe too well. I feel so, the same way. I'm kind of a minimalist. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's funny. You're the first one that said it. I am very much a minimalist. Really? Like, I grew up as an only child. So did um, I. My mom's always wished she had someone else so I, I could. Same. Um, My mom said the same thing. She was yeah. like, I wish I gave you a sibling. Yeah, I am 25% African, uh, West African. Okay. So. My mom's um, Italian. Uh, yeah. I'm the same way. My dad is black, and then my mom's just Italian. They're giving siblings separated at birth vibes. Now, something that really annoyed me, which they got me. They fucking got me invested. Colby ends up telling Alexis that he doesn't think he sees a future with them without giving her a reason. I don't think I would see a future with you in marriage. Which he doesn't need to. He doesn't owe her a reason, but she eventually presses him on it. What took you to that? 
place. Now maybe you're like me and assumed it was because of her being like really money driven for this thing because that's what he said. I don't think I'm the man that can fulfill all of her needs she's looking for. Mm -mm. But no, when she presses him the next day, he just says, I'm not attracted to you. His ex and me look the most similar of anyone here. How can he not be attracted to me? His ex and I are both blonde and white. That's your reasoning why you don't see a future with me? This reminds me of that community meme. I can excuse greed, but I draw the line at superficiality. So was that the real reason? Money? I don't know. Did the editors forget to leave in some details to make it spicier? I don't know. Maybe he's just an asshole. Whatever it is, this is the beginning of Colby's menace era. I mean, just look at the guy. He found out half the girls want him and he just became the Sean. I, I really have nothing else to say, honestly. Yeah, me either. Cool. I'm gonna grab a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know. I guess I just don't align myself with those values. I mean, money isn't everything. <laughs> You're fucking ugly. It's so bad for getting that away. Maybe the producers just sat him down like, look, we know it would probably make a lot of sense and clear the air if you just told her the truth, but we are losing a lot of money and could really use the engagement. So if you could just tell her her face looks like a boot, that would be great. Ray. She's someone that checks off every single box. We connect on every single level. I'm, myself, am not ready to marry April right now. But maybe I can change for the right person. Damn. Imagine April watching this show back after all of this and just seeing him say that. <laughs> now while Jake and Ray are hitting it off brother and sister style like they know how to do at their table, April and guy who I'm pretty sure has only said seven words in this entire show, they come over to stir the pot. How's everybody? Can we squeeze in with y'all? Or at least it's edited to look that way, because nothing is said, the episode ends, and the next one begins, and they don't reference it at all. So most likely nothing of interest happened. I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, this is the type of person who I think can just distract me for the next three weeks and maybe be like a little bit of a therapy situation. I mean, isn't that the point of the show? <laughs> and later on, they're all hanging out, shooting the shit before they have to make their final decision. And my main takeaway from this was that these are the least interesting people I have ever seen. And Colby thought the dress code was just Tony Stark. Also, Colby cannot hear a single thing anyone is saying this entire interaction. <laughs> Never have I ever wear, wear a hat during sex. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank you look like you have. I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> I will not accept anything other than him wearing a propeller hat during sex. And what happens next is that argument that I showed a little bit of when I was talking about how there's more issues with April and Jake than just the marriage thing. So it's like, fuck me. What do I do? Now after that conversation, April does not take it too well. So naturally, Hunter comes over to comfort her, and I had to check my notes to make sure that was his name because him and Nate are the same person in my mind. You are strong. You are strong. You're a strong person. Yeah. And you're gonna get through this. And you're gonna be better for it. I'm sorry, up until like 10 seconds ago, I legitimately thought you were someone from the crew. It's so obvious that Hunter is just bullshitting his way into some pussy because after hearing that conversation between Jake and April, there's no way you come out of that thinking that April is the one that needs to be comforted. That's very clear to me from like our interactions. The amount of love that you give and the amount of respect that you give. You've made me feel better than like anybody else I've talked to after like situations like this. Listen, baby, it's no problem. I'm a sociopath. So now it's time for everybody to make the choice. That makes me nervous. Like, is our relationship 100% certain? Will he walk away with me? Alexis, I don't even remember who you came here with, but I hope they don't. If you guys weren't feeling things right now, I would send you to the hospital and check for a <laughs> pulse. You're supposed to be feeling all these things you're feeling. Look, if you guys weren't feeling emotional distress right now, we'd have to do something about that because Netflix needs a certain amount of dark energy to keep this machine pumping. Madeline. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Did they just wake her up? Vanessa is giving teacher that just woke you up in the middle of her lesson plan energy. Hi. Now after everyone gives their own versions of, this is hard, a few notable things happen. Nate chooses April for his trial marriage, but April does not choose him back. She chooses Hunter. I choose Hunter. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. After Alexis sees this, she goes on some long monologue about this is hard for her. To sit here and like be like, oh, I'm happy for you that you had a good experience. And wouldn't you know it, Hunter just 
fucking proposes to her. Guys, I want to marry Alexis. <laughs> oh. April's gotta be like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> and I know Mr. and Mrs. Lachey are just fuming at the end of the table on the inside right now. <laughs> but that's not the end of Nate's misfortune for the night. To him, the thought of losing Lauren to Big Cheese Colby. Fucking Big Cheese Colby. Is too much to bear for him. So he just proposes to Lauren. If Lauren chooses Colby and they end up living together for the three weeks, I'm shitting my pants. Nope, nope, absolutely not. Back in your seat. Oh so, God. Lauren, will you marry me? Will you spend the rest of my life? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but I hope that by the end of this, they work through that very, very serious issue and come to a solution before doing anything silly. I know the Lachey's are scrambling right now, hoping that everybody doesn't come to their senses and just get married and ruin the show. Even though now that I say that out loud, nobody on this show should be married. Nobody at all. So yeah, without handling any of their issues or why they didn't want to get married in the first place, they get engaged. They all get into a heated discussion at the table about this, especially because Nate proposing to Lauren right after another proposal. Like you were given the ultimatum and we've gone four or five days and now all of a sudden- Are you saying that her saying yes to me proposing for the love of my life is her being fake. Is that what you're saying right now? It's obvious that Nate just didn't want to take a third L for the night and thought, maybe, maybe, if, maybe if I if I ask her one more time. Now, as far as I know, or what my, my study guide tells me, these two are still engaged after the show. So who knows if anything has happened since or what will happen. Now, after they all pick their trial marriages, them living together is quite boring. I struggled getting through the many hours of it. Most of the time, they're just awkwardly hanging out in their hotel room with the cameraman. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> and most of the couples sleep in the same bed for this trial marriage. Except Zay. Poor Zay. <laughs> he has to be the biggest person on this show, and he has to sleep in a love seat for most of it. Except this night. And in the end, only two of the couples broke up. April and Jake, thank fucking god, and Randall and Shanique. The rest are either still dating, engaged, or married with a baby, like Colby and Madeline. Which, on the reunion, Colby walks out with pregnant Madeline with that Tom Cruise Oprah interview energy. Colby has entered his final form. I mean, look at his fucking hair. Unfortunately, the baby is now property of Nick and Vanessa Lachey and Netflix Incorporated. Can I say this is our first ultimatum baby? But guys, moral of the story is, if your 23-year-old girlfriend gives you a marriage ultimatum and wants to do it all on Netflix, it will work out. For your Instagram following. Anyways guys, if you did like the video, give it a like rating down below, comment any thoughts, ideas, opinions, or anything about the show, or if you've seen it, what did you think? Subscribe if you're new here and you like my videos, and with that being said, thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.